Okay, Alex is starting it seems and he has tenacity and ether which is solid because that's gonna give him the pantheism I imagine. Yep. I don't think I have to commentate on every single uh, action in the Monarchs player's first turn. We're just gonna wait and see what he ends up with. And these in effect. Oh, I need to. Oh. Okay. That is Monarchs with Super Quantums. He plays Super Quantums. And he forgot to shuffle after Tenacity. Uh, no big deal. Nothing to worry about. The other top 4 match is... Um, We've already seen Dave play Burning Abyss, Phantom Knight, and uh, Mimolis or is also playing Monarchs. I can I can say that now because every everybody else has been on stream. The only one who's not been on stream out of the top four is uh, Mimoli, so it would kind of be unfair if I didn't say it. Um, Okay, so the other match had a ruling appeal, even though I gave them a judge, they had a ruling question and they have an appeal, but Robin saved it, solved it, everything's fine. Um, Alex going to bring back his Prime, no Maxi from Federico, we know he plays them, we saw them. Um, which one of the meta decks do I like most, or rather which one do I hate least? Well, um... Even though I think Monarchs are degenerate, I think Extra Deck Monarchs is actually alright. You know, that deck's not even that easy to play, it's not even that straight format. Um, there has not been a Pendulum deck in this format, no, uh, in this tournament, nope. Uh, I think Pendulum has some potential. I cannot say if I like it that much yet, because I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried uh, to make Pendulum great again yet. Um, I, might, I will do that, I will try it. Uh, I can't say much if I like it, but... Um, yeah, the one deck I really don't like out of the decks right now is Cosmo. I think it's not good enough because just Monarch wrecks it so hard, like so hard. Uh, Burning Abyss I like a bit, but honestly I think the mirror matches are really weird. Even though they are probably skillful, they are skillful mirror matches, so it's not that bad. But once Winter Blossom comes out, I will not consider Burning Abyss anymore for myself, honestly. Because that, that card is like, it's not like Mistake, you know, where... Mistake was not a reason not to play Necros because Mistake could be outed, right? You could play around Mistake, you could simply MST Mistake. With Winter Blossom it's different. There's no reasonable out to Winter Blossom. You know, there's cards that can negate it like Strike and Debunk, but traps are too slow to do to rely on in that in that regard. And um, I'm I'm I, I know for sure that every almost every deck is gonna have triple Winter Blossom and um, that's just doesn't feel good to have a card that you just auto lose to if your opponent opens it because if he opens it there's no out there's no debunk on your first turn there's no strike on your first turn you just lose so um, yeah so we saw a Dante first turn Alex's first turn was actually pretty bad he was only able to summon prime and set two so he did break um, the Dante with the with the speed droids was made ran over the prime um, okay, there's a normal summon of this gloves after Rota, special summon this. Interesting decision to make that in main phase 2. I guess, no, it, it makes sense actually because it plays around Stormforth. Like, 
the only thing that Alex could have stormed for in this scenario was the Dante and not the breaksword that is probably gonna come out here so uh, it doesn't make sense Blossom is bad design card yeah it, it kinda is honestly it is, it is it is but he actually just makes a second Dante so I don't understand why he wouldn't just make that in main phase one maybe he just wanted to wait and bait out to Stormforth first and once again he hits pretty good with his mills he hits a trap of the burning Ab uh, of the phantom knights and he hits two ancient cloaks he will not be able to use both in the same turn but that's still a pretty good mill right there mm -hmm. so he's going to use both of these graveyard effects and um He's in a good position if they enter a grind game here. Uh, the thing is, Alex's hand was definitely bad last turn, and there's not much that changed. Oh, he didn't attack. Ah, he he far far. Did he far far? Did I missed far far, right? Okay, yeah, I was I was talking I was talking shit. Okay, I was stupid. So probably it was far far that happened there. And in the case of far far, if far far activates. Um, Alex was not able to respond with Stormforth and Ether because at that point you cannot activate Ether yet because he was not able to summon it with only one prime. He was only able you're only able to activate Ether in hand if you have the means to summon a tribute monster, which means that the Stormforth would have to have resolved already. Um, so he cannot he cannot like when you only have one monster on the board that is not tribute summoned, but he doesn't have Stormforth, but either way, if you don't have a monster that's tribute summoned yet, you just can't activate Stormforth and Aether in one chain because Aether cannot be activated. So end phase Typhoon takes both back rows out, um, Prime shuffles back too. I think Prime goes to Grave. Yeah, it goes to grave like I think, like I, th I said. So yeah, it goes to grave. We're back. All is good. Um, no, not rip. We're back. Short disconnect. Everything is fine. I didn't even get disconnected from the end. So weird. But okay. Um, like I said, Farfa hit the Prime, and because Prime is not a monster anymore when it's banished, it goes to Grave in the end phase. Um, like, it tries to return to the board, and then it, then the game notices that it's not a monster, and it goes to Grave. Um, so yeah. He gets his Pantheism Surge, he had that engraved from last turn. Um, he's not in a bad spot if he if he if he can play now which he's likely to because he gets another search and yeah you see it already if he's if you're picking out returns you have a playable hand already because why would you pick return if you have an unplayable unplayable hand so we'll see how it ends up being um, there's still a Beatrice to play around there's domain domain a big factor in this matchup
So there seems to be a ruling up here then. Okay, so I'm back in the game. We missed some stuff. Music too loud. Okay, give me a second. Now it should be fine. Now it should be fine. Yeah, my, my internet crashed for a second. Alright, back to the game. We have to music the other thing. 
Music too low. <laughs> okay. You guys, man. There you go. Back to the game. It's it, it's still zero zero, right? Yeah, Alex is still at the three thousand he was at before. Um, the game is now a lot more even. The Beatrice is gone. The Dante is gone. Um, Tour guide hits the board. Alex responds with ether. Is Stormforth active? Probably not. Or is it? Okay, so the other the, the ruling issue is solved. Apparently, they give they get twenty minutes extra time because of that, but that's fine because they started earlier than this match anyway, so it's okay. Okay, so what happened here is Alex only has two more monarchs in uh, one more monarch in his deck, and uh, he act he tried to activate Ether and Return, and he can't resolve both because uh, he only has one monarch left in the deck, and because he activated Ether first, that was a legal activation, and the second one wasn't, I think, and uh, that's why I let him resolve Ether. I think so. I'm not a judge for a reason. Return was a legal activation. Oh yeah.
Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, Alright, so we're gonna let Mikozi check his deck real quick. That there's no monarch, he does it real quick. Fair stuff, fair stuff. Um, and the return is gonna resolve, yeah, makes sense. Best misplay of my life, yeah, might be. Happens, yeah, yeah. So it's still Mikozi's turn. He goes to battle phase with that board. Ah, because domain's on the board. Yeah, of course, I missed that. <laughs> That's uh, something you shouldn't be missing. So he banishes that. Um, that turns off domain for the turn. And that's kind of a huge error then by Alex. Yeah, he doesn't get a warning. He doesn't get a warning because both activations were legal. You're totally right. He doesn't get a warning. He does not get a warning for that. So he had to surge Kura, so which is kind of bad, and he didn't get to send anything with uh, with Ether. So unfortunate for Alex here that he messed that chain up. He just didn't know what was in his deck left. How many monarchs does he play? Even oh, click the wrong one. Alex plays. Uh, yeah, that's why he doesn't play triple Erebus. He only plays two, and that's what he's missing right now in his deck, at least. If he wouldn't have drawn it. Um. Wow, Alex has actually brought a very unconventional list. I'm gonna go over that later for sure, but that's there's some interesting decisions in there. Um yeah. No extra deck as you can see on the on the screen of course. But uh certainly some other interesting stuff. I think it was like exactly 22.30 because they started shortly after the others, yeah. Thirty minutes. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of good that we didn't make 40 minutes because the games are taking long. 40 minutes would have gotten us into time mode every single time. And who likes time mode, right? I think one hour is a fair estimation on time. <laughs> Go nuts. Yeah. Um, he says he still doesn't have anything good to do. Yeah, okay. Mm. Break is 3000 in main phase 2 though, and he's gonna make a Beatrice as well. The Sir is gonna bring back maybe a Dante. Yep. Everything else would have died anyways. Breaksword hits the domain and the Dante. Nice move there, keeping the breaksword on the board. Um, 
However, Alex still has the return and the prime face up. Well, the return, we know there's no target for the return, so that doesn't matter. But the prime is still there to recycle stuff. The blue layer came from teleport this turn. The ether returns because far far he did not use his prime this turn, I think, to shuffle something back. Um, okay. We'll see if he can break through that um, that Beatrice break sword board. And I'm being informed that um, Dave is up one game against uh, Mimoli with uh, Burning Abyss against uh, Monarchs. Which is interesting because the matchup is in Monarch's favor. The matchup is certainly in the Monarch's favor. He uses the Prime now to recycle Domain and something else. Draw a card, puts him at 7 cards in hand. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff to do. Hmm. He has a Kuraz in hand, we know that because he had to grab that with return. Is that good? Not at all, he says. Okay. Idos was it, right? Was that the Idos? I think so. Okay, so I'm being informed that Memoli apparently had a game a, a disconnect in game two, and he was down one game, and we cannot do anything for like a disconnect has to be a game loss. Otherwise, you could just disconnect whenever you're in a losing position. So um, when you disconnect while side decking, it's obviously not a game loss because you can just reproduce the situation immediately, and it doesn't matter. But he he disconnected in game two. Um, and that's going to be a game loss and um, Stefano Memoli coming late to his first top 8 match and then in top 4 getting a game loss for a disconnect rough times man rough times but I think he's going to lose because of that uh, a good matchup even a good matchup is what he's going to lose I keep disconnecting. And game one finished while we were disconnected. And it's 1 0 for Federico Mikosi in the second top four because the first top four apparently finished because of a disconnect. Um, like Stefano Mimoli disconnected in the middle of game two. There's nothing we can do about that. A disconnect in the middle of the game has to be a game loss other than that like otherwise you could just disconnect whenever you have a bad position or something like that
some small talk there about the matchups and let's have a look at the side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, I know what I know what the Mikozi is gonna side in it's interesting okay Alex also has a decent side in that matchup we're gonna see it probably we will we will be seeing it Ooh, and Alex sets a back row. That's another back row, and that's gonna be a brick for Alex. That's not looking good. That's not looking good for Alex right now. He did brick. He did brick. Brick city bitch. Brick, brick city bitch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not like this, yeah. Well, that's how it is. That's what you have to accept when playing Monarchs. The deck is very strong if it doesn't break, but if it breaks, you lose, and it breaks a significant amount of the time. Um, yeah. One thing, let, let me count how many random upstarts we had in the tournament. Nope, that's, I don't want to show that. Um, no random upstart here. Yeah, no random upstart here. There was a random upstart in Matei's deck. No random upstart here. No random upstart here. And not even a random upstart here. Interesting. Okay. So only two guys played the upstart anymore. Even though before pretty much any deck played it. And the Twin Twister. We see the Twin Twister hitting double Storm Forth. And followed up by a Terror Top. That is uh, pretty good. No effect of the Terror Top though. He does have to tuck in a walk already. That's a small plus side for uh, for Alex here um, there's gonna be a Dante still but he did not get the plus one with the, with the terror top here and he mills Sir Silent Boots and Allure a mill that looks really good but he doesn't have a target for Sir so he basically only hit one good thing which that's expected um, that's expected he's gonna get a trap out of it though so Alex cannot top deck into idea anymore to get out of his brick here because the trap is gonna prevent it curious about his decision to set double storm forth though because like twin twister has to be expected right maybe it would be better to just set one because you can only activate one anyway so I just now noticed that it's not actually Eugen's account, it's a fake account. <laughs> it's Eugen Height. <laughs> she. <laughs> it's funny. You almost got me there. So okay, Alex. Alex is totally breaking the the Beatrice. That this game's over. No, but he's gonna he's gonna lose next turn probably. There's going to be tour guide into far far into. Yeah, this is over. <laughs> it's it's okay. It's okay. Um, tour guide into Graf Dante, and if he hits far far, the game is right. It's over right now. Uh, or Barbar. Or fog blade. That's game. That's game. You can just bring out Farfa, banish the face down, use the fog blade, use the fog blade. Yeah. And uh, Alex is out. 
Alex is out, I think, unless there's a surprise battle fader, which I can check if it's in his list. Um, let's see. Well, these two are 5,000, sir is 1,000, and that is it. Alex admits defeat. Mikozy goes on to the final against Dave Grabat. And, uh, yeah, that was quicker than expected, actually. Um, no timeout this round, and the other match is already finished, and we see in the background here... Double Majesty's Fiend and an Erebus were in Alex's hand and uh, he couldn't.